been like this for a while. You guys hear me? Yeah, good enough? I know I got a little voice. <clears throat> good stories. Thank you. I like those stories, both of them. Um, how many of you ever been to Walpanik? How many of you, okay, so you don't even know where it's at. We went there for a powwow the first time. It was this year. Man, I've been, I go to a lot of powwows, so but man, was I impressed. I'll tell you what, man, jeez. And have any of you guys that gone to powwows seen chicken dances? If you haven't, you want to see one, go, is it Labor Day, right? Go Labor Day. I tell you what, man, you will see some of the best chicken dancers ever that dance seven songs in a row, back to back. Of course I won, but no. I couldn't even attempt. These guys are in very good shape. Uh, we heard some different stories. Uh, my story is somewhat of a uh, creation story. I get, I gotta move around, I get nervous. And a uh, little different, but I guess first of all, I need to let you know who I am. Okay, Itoka, okay, <clears throat> this gun. It's still a Itanikoa focus to them. Now Itanikoa, outside the guy. Miss Boska, see, it's now I'm Scotty, because Miss Boska, now Browning, Montana. Thank you. My uh, name is Roger, my real name is uh, my first name that my grandfather gave me was Little Man. And I had this when I was a baby. I don't know what he was thinking. But, and later I got my warrior name, uh, which is Crazy Bear. Uh, don't know what he's thinking about that one either. But I am from, uh, I'm an elder in the Blackfeet Nation. Um, I teach at the university sometimes. Work with a lot of veterans. Um, that's mainly what I do. Um, but this story um, that I have, kind of a different story and as we all say and again let me back up first I would like to recognize and honor the Navy police for whose territory that we are in. We must always do this as Native people we should always recognize the people whose territory that we're in. That's just how we are taught. Uh, and also again the city of Moscow and the people thanks for stepping up and renaming this the right way. <laughs> Thank you. And I gotta throw one more thing. Gotta get this out there. We have a chance to elect a great woman in the state of Idaho for governor, man. So get out and vote for Paulette. There, that's my Paulette. <laughs> that's my story. A long, long time ago, out on the foot of the mountains, beautiful, beautiful mountains, the Rockies, there was this huge encampment probably about a hundred lodges, just all over. Beautiful place, lake crystal clear. It was in, a, in the summertime, it was nice and warm, and you could look up in this mountain just in the background, just a gorgeous place to be. And during this time, there was this uh, little girl who uh, was always going well, back in those, in those days, you could talk to anything and everything, especially kids. They could talk to rocks, water, trees, snakes, you name it, they could talk to them. And they could get an answer. And uh, one of the things that the kids did, what they don't do much nowadays, they all had chores. They didn't have no... But they all had chores, and that was part of who they were. They grew up like that. It was just something that they did. And they didn't say nothing about it. They didn't talk back or anything. They didn't even need to be told. They just did it. And this little girl's job was to get water every morning, every evening. The spring is about oh, 80 yards away. Nice, cold, cold water coming up from out of the rocks. Down, it's like water in your fridge, only colder. It tasted so good, it was almost sweet just cold water and that was her job 
there was a lot of kids in camp. They all had different jobs. So she would go there every day, twice a day, and go get this water and fill up the water bags. And uh, she would always be going down, you know, skipping away, just happy and laughing. And everybody would see her. All the animals would be down there in the evening. You know, the deer, the elk, bear, everything, the rabbits, all down there getting a drink. And they all liked seeing her come. She would stop and she would talk to them all and they would all be glad to see her. And, and there was one, uh, the trees, huge, huge lodgepole, probably about 150 feet tall, big lodgepole. They called him the overseer, the, sort of the chief. And his job was to watch over everything and, and to kind of give instructions to everything that was going on that he saw around him. So. One day, after, you know, getting a few months into the summer, he noticed the noise was getting less from the camp. Because in the evening, especially near water, you could hear the whole camp laughing and running around, kids screaming, dogs chasing them. And they noticed it started getting quieter each time. And then they noticed this little girl that would come over and, uh, she wasn't hardly talking. She didn't have no bounce in her step anymore. She walked with her head down. And, you know, saying, hi, how are you? She'd just look at him and just, I'm okay. So after a while, they decided that they needed to help this little girl find out what was going on. So the chief seen her coming and they said, okay, well, let's ask her. And, and then in those days again, when somebody asked you, especially an elder or something, you never lied. There was no such thing as a lie back then. We didn't even know how. So they asked her, what's wrong? And he said, well, I don't know. Everybody's just mad. Uh, why are they mad? I don't know. We can't, kids, we can't play with each other. They don't want me playing with my friends. They don't want my friends playing with me. They're not talking to each other. My mom and my auntie and everybody else. Everybody's just, all these adults are just mad. And they're telling us kids that we can't play with each other. And so we just stay inside. We don't do anything. So she leaves. They have uh, counsel. The chief, the lodge pole, calls everybody, all the animals, calls them all in over by this, this uh, place where they get water, over by the spring. And as they get there, they say, we gotta help, we gotta help this little girl and her people. We got something, there must be something we, gotta, we can do. So they all talk about it and then the chief says, well, in the morning, we'll have council here again. So all the animals, everything came back that morning. Early in the morning, sun was just starting to come up and they're all eager to see what it is. So she said, well, the creator talked to me and he said, this is what we got to do, but it's going to cost us. It's going to cost one of you your life, but you'll get it back when we see you on the other side. It's just temporary. And I said, well, who's it going to be? He said, well, the Creator already put it in your heart. You know who it is. So the deer steps out and he says, it's me. I'll do it. I'm going to sacrifice my life. But I will get it back so I'm not, don't feel sad for me. So I say, okay. So how are we going to do it? And Chief says, well, he already knows what's going to happen. This is the way it's going to happen. So he walks up to him and he breaks off his limb and he drops on the deer and this is a big, big, big limb. The deer goes out instantly. So he says, okay people, everybody, we need to work together to get this done. Brother Eagle, come down here, I need your help. So I need you to move the hide, make a line, cut a line on the deer so we can start on this hide. So he cuts the line down the stomach. He says, coyote, wolf, 
come here. I need your help. A coyote and a wolf come. He says, pull the hide back. Pull the hide back. Pull it off the deer. So they may do that. And then he calls. He calls the, uh, I'm trying to remember, I've been a while ago. He calls the elk. He says, come. For the elk, come, I need you, I need your help. So the elk comes down and he says, what do you want me to do? to take this, put it in the water. So the elk puts it, picks it up, brings the hide over the water, bends down, puts it in the water. So he says, fish, all the fish, otters, all the people that breathe the water. I need you to pull all the hair and everything off of that. So they get busy and they do all that. So when they're done, he comes back up and calls the moose. Brother Moose, come, I need your help. What do you want? He says, I need you to, after they bring it back up to the edge of the water, I need you to pick it up, bring it out there in the sun. So they all do that. And then he calls the elk back again. While they're doing this, well, the elk are bringing it up on his hill. He's telling all these little beavers and everything, that piece of my limb that dropped, I need you to chew it all the way around inside. Make that, that branch a, a hole. Chew it, leave about an inch, two inches thick all the way around it. So the beavers are getting busy. They're going to town on it. They love to do this kind of stuff. So everybody's just getting excited. They're wondering, okay, what are we going to do? So he gets it. <coughs> And then he calls on the elk again. I need you to pick that up and bring it up here to this hill where this, where this hide is at. So he does that and brings it up there. And he says, I need you to stretch it over that. And he says, okay, you little mice that have been just standing around watching. <laughs> you know, okay, what am I going to do? I got a job for you. I want you to put two holes all the way around this thing. Okay? And you, snakes that have been watching the mice, think you're going to get an early meal? No, it ain't going to happen. I got a job for you too. Just take this piece of sinew. And as we do this, every hole, I want you to go back and forth, all the way around this thing. Pull it. And then when you're done, give it to the bear. Give it to the brother grizzly. It's real big. So they grab it and you guys put it all in one to tie it in a big knot. So he has the elk and the moose and all the other ones hold it and as the bear pulls it these things tighten it tightens up good and tight so he says all right tie it tie it off so the snake's wrapping around real quick and he says, put it back out in the sun you leave it out there for four days so they do that bring it back up on the hill it's out here in the sun so they're still wondering what is going on what is this thing so they come back and they get it. He tells, tells the moose again, go put this on, go get that, put it on your rack and bring it down here. Put it over here by this tree. This tree right over here, where the little girl can't see it. So, okay. So they go and they do that. They bring it down. Put it over this. So now it's been in the sun. It's been dried out. Been there for a while. They're still wondering, what is this thing? We've, what, how are we going to make this girl and all these people happy with this? What good is this going to do? So, now they see her coming. She's still sad. Taking her time, walking slow. Just, you know, just didn't even want to be around anybody. So she gets down there and they turn her, hi! Everybody's, you know, being friendly. Tell her, hi! How are you? I'm okay. What's going on, Chanel? It's even worse than I thought. It's All we do is, me, I come and get water, and I go back, and I stay in. We all, that's all we do. And what sense? And I don't know, my mom and dad are still mad at everybody. Everybody's still mad at us. What happened? I don't know. They just said, we're kids. You kids, leave those kids alone. So, okay, and he said, well, I have something for you. We made something for you. She kind of looked and 
looked around and he said, what did you make me? And she said, so he tells all his bunch and hundreds of mice, because this thing's heavy. He asked them all, so they're all shifting out and bringing this little thing out to her. <laughs> they get out and she looks at it and he says, looks at it and she says, oh, what is this? And she says, well, it's for you. It's a gift. We made it to bring, to help you and all the other people. And he said, oh, okay. He says, oh, one more thing. Mr. Otter, bring up one of those nice polished sticks you guys have been chewing on. This one is nice and straight and got all the bark off of it. And uh, Mr. Rabbit, you. The rabbits used to have long tails, long fluffy tails. So he said, I need some of your tail. What? No, no, no. It was the first time any animal ever argued that was a rabbit. <laughs> he said, yeah, so the rabbit breaks off a piece of his tail and he brings it up. So he says, get me some of the pine sap from that tree. So he go over there and he put pine sap all over the stick. He puts the tail on the stick. He tells the beaver, put this on your tail. He says, okay. So he walks over, puts that on his tail. He says, now come back. Says, okay. He says, now hit that. likes it. Everybody's liking it. All these animals are doing it. Do it again. Do it again. So, he's doing it. so they're, they're there. They're looking at it. This girl is smiling now. She's over there smiling. And he, uh, he gives her the stick. There you go. What does that sound like? Where does that come from inside the human? The heart. So now, all of a sudden, here comes the wind. Coming out of anywhere. This way wind is. They come, you know, they just get here and they go and go and go and it's, What is that? What is that? What is that noise? What is that? I've got to, I, I must know what that is. The girl's looking up, she says, it's this. Says, oh boy, oh boy, people gotta know about this. They gotta know, so he takes off. He took off, he's out there telling everybody about this, this new thing. So he's, as he's out there, and he comes back, and she's telling, and they're, they're, they're telling her, well, go ahead. And she's smiling now, she's starting to, a little bounce in her step again. Now, all the people are hearing this. It's in the evening. The water, when there's water out, you can hear this more clearly. The chief looks out. He sees them. They're all coming out of their teepees. All coming out of their lodges. Still is hitting. And she looks and she can see them from far off. They're all coming out. They're all walking out. They're wondering, what is that? It's a beautiful sound. What is that noise? As they come out, they come out of there and say, hi. Hey, how are you doing? How are you? Good to see you, brother. Good to see you, sister. I'm sorry. What, were you, what was I mad at you about? I don't even know why I was mad. I can't remember. I can't remember why I was mad. And they all start coming out, smiling, talking to each other, hugging each other. You see, how, as Indian people, even a lot of other people, the first thing, a lot of times, once we meet, we're friends. The second time, we're family. We always hug each other. I have a lot of non-indigenous people <laughs> that are not native. And now we see them, we hug. So we just, they were hugging each other. Can't even remember, they were crying. 
What happened? I don't know. You guys were just mad. So all the kids were out, running around, screaming, running and playing. And they all started coming over. As they walked, hundreds came over to this big area. And as they got to this area, they saw this little girl standing there. But this was much bigger trouble, big, big trouble. As she was standing there, this came over. Only she sounded much prettier. earlier, the powwow of Walpenet and all over. My wife and I go a lot of powwows. There ain't no dancing without this. There ain't no singing without this. And it's a good time. We have a lot of fun. So when you hear the drum, you know something good is going to happen. We use it in our sweat lodges. Something good happens in there. We use it in many, many ceremonies. So that is where the way I was told where this came from. That was what it was began to use for. Started out with the one song. And now, I invite you guys, if nothing else, go to the one here at the U of I in April. Have a blast. Don't be afraid. It's not just for Indians. We share it. It's for us to share with you guys. And then go and listen and then feel the power from it. And then watch everybody and go and talk to somebody that's a different color of skin. You'll have a wonderful time. You'll make a good friend. Some of you might even get a grandma or grandpa from it. And just go and be there. So this is how we started with the drum. I hope. 